Okay, we're gonna have, get started. All right, welcome to Date on Kubernetes Day. Thank you all for being here and uh, trudging through the snow and rain this morning. Um, that was a fun time that we were not expecting. Uh, my name is Melissa Logan. I'm the director of the Data on Kubernetes community. Uh, and I have with me Adam Durr, who is a, uh, on the Starbucks team, senior platform engineer. And we're gonna walk you through a brief keynote this morning before we dive into the really fun talks. Uh, and I've been threatened by the uh, first talk if we run over, so we promise we won't. Uh, first, we want to say a huge thank you to Percona for being a sponsor of this event. We truly could not put this event on without them, um, without any of our sponsors. Uh, the CNCF team does a stellar job of putting all this stuff together, streaming, uh, streaming the videos afterwards, so you have great content. And we thank Percona, not for this year, but they've been a sponsor of this event multiple times. We are very grateful for their support, so thank you, Percona. <laughs> yes. Um, we also want to say thank you to our program committee. It is getting bigger and better every year. We had a really great turnout of people who wanted to contribute to putting the schedule together that you are going to see here today. Um, so thank you all. If you're here in the room, raise your hand. Anybody? Um, thank you all for your time. Um, it takes a, a, a bit of time to, to think through, great rate all the talk, so we really appreciate it. So thank you. Um, I'm going to turn this over to Adam. He's going to walk through some uh, uh, important uh, things we need to know for today. Thank you, Melissa. Uh, before we get off, uh, here's some housekeeping notes. Uh, KubeCon has a code of conduct. If you see or hear that Valis hates it, you can scan this QR code. Just please con of others. Uh, we're accessible. If you need to translate the sessions, scan this QR code on your phone to see captioning. Uh, refreshments and meals. Um, we have a coffee tea and water outside the room and the lunch um, upstairs. And tonight, there's a reception five to seven um, in the upper mezzanine. Okay, back to Melissa. <laughs> Um, and we have this event again happening in London for um, KubeCon Europe. So the CFP, it always creeps up on us. It is coming up again really soon. Um, if you want to submit something for DOK Day in London, please do so by December 4th. Um, if you have any questions about what that looks like or what m would make a good talk, you can find us on Slack. We're happy to help you uh, um, sort out your abstract. Um, if you're not familiar with the data on Kubernetes community, we've been around since 2020, um, back when it was very daring to do data on Kubernetes. There were some really early adopters who uh, took the pioneering route and decided to try this out and make this better for all of us. And it's gotten better and better and better since then. Um, we've really seen adoption uh, grow significantly and more interest in uh, running data workloads of all kinds on Kubernetes. Our community is now 4,500 folks on Slack. We've got 9,000 folks on our newsletter. And there are almost 3,000 people on our monthly virtual meetups. Um, we host a lot of different technical content each month. Next month, we are hosting the folks from Valky coming to talk about how they're running on Kubernetes. So we encourage you to sign up for that meetup. Join the Slack. We have a lot of folks that are there to answer questions that you have. So please join the community. Um, we also want to say thank you to our community sponsors. Um, they are the folks that ensure that we can put together our DOK report, our virtual meetups, put on this event, all the different things that the Data on Kubernetes community does. So huge thank you to EDB, Google Cloud, and Percona. Um, we also have a full list of sponsors on the DOK.community website. Uh, we do have Data on Kubernetes ambassadors. There are many of them. They will, I think there's a handful of them here. Is anybody here at the event? Gabriele is here. Um, these are the people you can turn to if you have questions about anything DOK. You can find them on LinkedIn. You can find them at this event. You can find them in our Slack. Um, these folks are fantastic. Our website, dok.community, has all their names listed. So if you want to go find someone and talk to them, um, please do. They are ready to help. Uh, so thank you all for the ambassadors for all their support for DOK. 
One of the projects that we've been working on recently is a getting started guide. So we want to help people throughout their entire DOK journey from when you're just getting started to more advanced techniques of running data workloads on Kubernetes. Um, this is on GitHub. So if you haven't um, seen it yet, please scan the code. You can also go to our website, and we have a link to it from there. Um, this was put together by a number of contributors in our community, and if you have expertise and content you want to share, please do. It's open to anyone to contribute something um, as well, and or just use it as a resource. So thanks to the folks who helped put this together. This was the brainchild of our community manager, Paul Au. Really awesome stuff. Um, we want to see it continue to grow over the years to include intermediate and advanced as well. And finally, the last thing I wanted to mention is um, for each year for the past three years, we have produced a trend report for data on Kubernetes. Just today, we have launched the 2024 report. Um, it's been really interesting to track different trends. I mean, it was like the Wild West when we first started this on DOK, and it's been really cool to see the growth and interest uh, continue to get bigger and better. Um, this year, some of the key findings that we found were AI ML acceleration. So orgs are increasingly viewing Kubernetes for AI ML workloads as a competitive advantage. And the majority agree that it's going to serve as a key platform for accelerating AI strategy moving forward. So these are early signs that we're seeing. Um, we'll be interesting to see how this tracks in the next few years as well. Um, and AI ML workloads jump from second most common DOK use goes, or to number two from number seven in 2021. So it's definitely been climbing. I wonder why. I think all of us have been hearing a lot about AI, et cetera. Um, so it's, it's uh, interesting to see this trend. But of course, underlying all of that, databases have been the number one workload for three years running. This is no surprise. Um, a lot of the, the information in the survey supports databases. Um, because it shows that Kubernetes is very resilient and reliable for mission-critical workloads, and it just keeps getting better and better. So not surprising to see this. Um, databases continue to be number one here. And then there is a maturing ecosystem around DOK, so that organizations, what we saw in the data, they aren't just testing DOK, they are committing to it. Almost half of the organizations we surveyed are running 50% or more of their DOK workloads in production. And the most advanced organizations are running 75% or more in production environments. So really interesting to see that as well. Um, continued growth and adoption and people trusting Kubernetes to run data workloads, where I think it was kind of scary for people to think about it before. Now it's becoming more of the norm. Um, but of course, like any software, challenges remain. Tell me any software that has no challenges. I don't know. I'll give a million dollars. Um, the, even though acceptance and adoption is growing, um, their organizations cite, number one, a lack of maturity of open source Kubernetes features as the number one barrier. There are many people in this room I know who are working with Storage SIG, Cloud Native AI Working Group, all across the Kubernetes spectrum to help, help improve <clears throat> how data workloads run on Kubernetes. So if you are interested in helping with that effort to join the DOK community, you could join our SIG, um, talk to people who are doing this work, join Storage SIG, all the other things, Data Protection Working Group, et cetera, um, and we can all make this better collectively. Um, and then when we looked specifically at the AIML workloads, um, there are some additional hurdles that emerge, high compute costs, probably no surprise to anybody here. Uh, and then interestingly, insufficient Kubernetes expertise within data teams was the number two hurdle that they're experiencing right now. I think this is pretty widely known. Um, interesting to see it here. Um, I also want to thank members of our community, DOK, as well as members of the Cloud Native AI Working Group who helped us write questions for this survey. So thank you all for that. And with that, we will get our first presenters up on stage. We have May and Alad. I made it in time, so you don't have to, I don't know, shame me on stage. So come on up, and uh, we <laughs> welcome to DOK Day.